friends, good afternoon, good evening, America, and good morning, Australia. You're back on Radio Tony. I'm your host, Tony Londis, and this is the next in our series of shows with the gorgeous Vivian Shapira, and we're talking healing energy for everyone. Now, we've just had the best time doing these shows, and I wanted to shout out to those listening to you, listening to us live today on both my stream and Vivian's stream. We have Payo listening in the background with all the show information, the links that connect you to Vivian and her crystals and healing energy, her academy where you can learn about all of this stuff firsthand, and the link to her amazing book. Now, before uh, we get on with the show, I just want to remind you that Vivian published an award-winning and groundbreaking textbook, The Complete Guide to Crystal Surgery in 2020. This is a comprehensive manual that talks about all the healing energy available through crystals and how to do it. And when Vivian's not teaching, healing, writing and talking live on the show with me, she's gardening, cooking and spending time with her two granddaughters. Her other interests include travel, photography and making YouTube videos. She lives in Cincinnati, Ohio with her husband and two cats. The gorgeous Neil is, has been a wonderful support for us on this show and hopefully we will get to speak to him again later today with another fascinating segment. Now, the listeners have been asking wonderful questions. And so this week, Vivian and I thought that we would talk about one of the questions that the viewers has brought up. And this week, the question was around crystals and manifest manifestation. So for many of you, lots of you are using energy and conscious action to manifest the things that you desire in your life. As an addition to that, we're learning that crystals can assist this energy. And at the end of the day, manifesting and bringing things that you want into your life is about vibrational energy and what better tool to use than crystals. So good evening, Vivian. Hi there. Yeah, and we're going to talk about how to manifest with crystals. We're going to talk about connecting with spirit guides and also Neil's going to explain how to do a shamanic journey and we have also uh, recorded a drumming session so that after Neil gives that information people can come to our website and is it at crystalhealingtechniques.com at chaparra.com you come to our website chaparra.com and there'll be a drumming um, download that you can take so that you can use that to take you on an uh, on a shamanic journey with this instructions that Neil is going to give. So we have quite a lineup for today and I'm, we're very excited about it because we're talking about what we love Absolutely. and what we care about. And we're sharing this with people because we know how much this has transformed our lives, brought healing into our lives and brought us what we want. And we want everyone, we want everyone to benefit from the knowledge that we have gained in this way. And um, we hope that people will come visit us at chaperone.com, also at crystalhealingtechniques.com and see what we have to offer um, because we just have got quite a lot of information available and it's, it's there for say, free, you know. So, absolutely. Audience, yeah. there is such good information on all of Vivian and Neil's websites that will help you from beginner to expert. So if you're That's just right. learning about crystal energy healing as a beginner there's stuff there for you but if you've been doing it for a number of years then there's expert information as well so they cover the whole range of information and it's available on chapra.com so vivian first up this morning we wanted to talk about um, crystals for manifestation and when we talk about manifestation that means bringing into our lives that which we desire the most and that can go from love and a romantic relationship to abundance, to money, to healing, to calm, to confidence. A whole range of things can be assisted when we're trying to bring that energy into our lives. So Vivian, I'm going to hand over to you to talk about um, crystals and setting intentions. The show is yours. Okay. Thank you so much, Tony. So actually, Tony, you did a huge amount of legwork here and you wrote out a list of different 
properties that particular crystals have that uh, bring abundance into your life or manifest a desirable um, uh, result that you want. So, of course, that's what crystals do. They have a program in them and they either work on our energy to uh, bring that in for us so that the crystal's bringing it in. And then there's also manifestation crystals, which I will explain, that will actually program us. So sometimes we program the crystal and ask the crystal to bring us something. But with manifestation work, where you're trying to manifest something that you don't have, then the, the crystal actually programs us to bring it into our lives. And I'm going to explain more about that. Uh, but let's just share a few of those things that you prepared, Tony, because you wanted to talk about pyrite and you talked about the blocky presentation of pyrite and how people, you know, even though it's called fool's gold because of its color and um, fooling people into thinking it's gold, it's actually pyrite. But truth be told, pyrite is a, a crystal for bringing abundance and wealth into one's life uh, and correctly used partially because of its gold color, but also because that is a property of pyrite. And I have a lovely piece here that I got very early on in my oh, crystal yes. collecting. And I thought I would share that with people to see, look at this wonderful crystal of pyrite that's got multiple pyrite formations on it. I very much love this. And I keep it at the entrance to our home, not where people come in through the front door, but I keep it at the back door where we come in from the garage because it lends right. a certain energy to our home. And it sure has worked. We've done very well having this crystal in our in entryway where we go in and out, where it's influencing us and programming yes. us to bring a sense of prosperity and abundance, which is not always to do with money. It's to do with love no, and uh, yes. dynamics and people. We're very keen to reach people and connect with people. And this pyrite has certainly served us well in that regard. And then um, you talked also about tiger eye in your list of notes. And we will, of course, attach and make available these amazing notes that Tony put together. But you can see this wonderful tiger eye wand and tiger eye is known to help people with wealth and prosperity and to take care of their money as well because sometimes we make money and then we lose it and tiger eye helps us to maintain and sustain in that respect so lovely tiger eye wand that i got at uh, the tucson gem show one year so there's also citrine and that is known as the merchant stone and citrine can be an orangey color this one is from South Africa, and it's a little bit wow. more orange than yellow. And you can see it if I contrast to this Chinese citrine, but this is a paler yellow. And so then if you see the two mm -hmm. together, there I'm showing that over there, you can see the difference in the color, uh, I hope, on the screen. It can be a little bit difficult Vivian, with the Zoom thing. Yes, it, Vivian, is the color because the color is yellow. It is um, associated with success and freedom and abundance, and the color yellow is happy and welcoming. Is that part of what the crystal energy brings? And also, citrine is a, a combatant for negative energy as well, isn't it? Well, citrine does not collect negative energy one of the few stones no, no, it, it's like a list of stones that do not have to be cleared or cleaned because they don't pick up any negativity and citrine is in that category it's uh, uh it apparently doesn't pick up any negative energy which is which is good um there are some other stones like that and i know there's a list at the one of at the back of one of melody's books and it's something i think you can look up easily on the internet um i yes. think that citrine itself has properties and whether it's orange or yellow, it's going to have those properties. That's going to be different from the citrine that is actually amethyst that has been irradiated to bring out the orange color. Um, these that I'm showing are more natural citrines. And so, and you can tell it's not that sort of a deep orange color that amethyst that's been treated picks up. Now, even amethyst that's been treated is going to have a lot of citrine properties because what's making this yellow is natural radiation while inside the earth. 
And so we have got this right. synergy where man can treat the crystals and alter their properties or add to their properties. And so it's not always a bad thing when a crystal has been treated, okay. if it has been treated well and, uh, gotcha. and so on. Yeah. So um, there are these various uh, stones that are associated with manifestation and you can look them up. And uh, one of the main things is a manifestation crystal. I have a little one here and a, manif a true manifestation crystal is a crystal yes. that has another crystal completely embedded inside it. And I have this little oh. beauty here that has a crystal inside it. And I'm hoping it's showing up and that you can see it. And it's over there. And if it yes. is a true manifestation, you can see that embedded crystal from many different angles. Sometimes it's kind of, it, it's different from that. And one of the things to watch out for is that a phantom crystal is not the same as a manifestation crystal. In a phantom crystal, you can see an outline of a crystal, but that's just a different material that grew in that position. And you'll see the zone. We'll come back to the phantom crystals later because that's what we're going to use to connect with our spirit guides. Um, then you can Vivian, also use a... Does... Yes. Sorry, Vivian, that embedded crystal, it looks like quartz. Is there any way to know what that embedded crystal is? Is that one yes, quartz a, in the so one you showed a, the audience? That is a quartz crystal inside a quartz crystal. Correct. Mm -hmm. uh, now over here, this manifestation is pyrite crystals inside a quartz oh. crystal. Look at that. Oh, wow. Oh, now that's wow. a this is a powerhouse. I have never actually used it for manifestation work because it's got pyrite and quartz and it's got multiple yes. crystals on the inside. Look at that. Oh gosh. So that's just beautiful. extraordinary manifestation crystal that. So uh, maybe we'll use it tonight and uh, manifest <laughs> what we want to manifest. Uh, another manifestation style crystal is what's called a bridge crystal, which is when it's partially embedded and partially jutting up. So that would be like this one over here. And I'm hoping oh, again that you can see that. Okay, and that's yeah. called a bridge or penetrator crystal. And so that can be used for manifestation work. And then, but those can, those the bridge crystal, not so hard to find. True manifestation okay. crystals, they're very rare. I happen to have many okay. of them. I even have this cluster and I'm going to hold it up this way. And hopefully you can see all that crystal cluster on the inside oh, of my quartz. Yes. Isn't yes. that phenomenal? Yeah, that's, that's a beauty. So, um, so there's, there's that. But then all topaz is a manifestation crystal. So you can use a topaz. Oh. And this is from uh, Afghanistan. And then um, uh, ruby. Uh, and, oh, and, and I'll okay. show you the ruby later. Rubies are also manifestation crystals. So we're going to do, actually do a layout now. And I'm going to explain how to do a manifestation using these crystals. Um, and I'm going to move it over, so Neil's going to change cameras. So give us a moment, and we'll get ourselves sorted out. Okay, good. Fantastic. Go. Yeah. So, audience, Vivian's just getting set up to do a manifestation layout with her crystals, which will show you the simplest way to bring into your life what you desire and it can be abundance it can be love it can be happiness it can be calm lots of different things unique to each person who's wanting to manifest okay and now, now let's on make the sure screen, you can hear me um we can hear you okay good okay so now what i've done is i've placed a little piece of paper with an, with a handwritten note about what I want to manifest. And I'm placing it at the bottom of my little manifestation box. And I'm placing it there. And at this point, I am gonna give over to a more channeled kind of effect because I want to um, allow this energy. I can't control it, I can invite it. Yes. And I'm actually gonna yes. ask my spirit guides to help me 
and tell me what to do because I have found over and over again that it's better for me to allow than to try. And um, okay. I need an intention, a clear intention. So I've been very specific about what I want in my little written message. And now I'm going to energize it using my stones. And I think I'm going to start with my wand because that is what my um, spirit guides are telling me to do. And they're saying, just begin by creating a vortex of energy over this mm -hmm. uh, little box of manifestation beauty. And there we go. And they're saying, let that go out and into the ether and we will take it from there. So thank you very much. That's just what I needed to hear that someone else is taking over. And now they're saying, because this is about a group, use your cluster that's inside your courts and grid with this so oh. going to do what I call crystal surgery gridding because gridding is used as a term in different ways by different crystal healers. And this making it like a graph paper grid is what I mean. There we go. Wow, and I can feel the energy building as I'm working and I can feel it's as if this gum, it's getting thicker, the air is getting thicker inside the box. So that's giving me a great sense of um, success already. Now, you don't have to use a manifestation crystal if you don't want to. Just use quartz if you don't have one, I should say. Of course, we want to use it, but we don't necessarily have one. But there are many stones that will do, uh, do this. So then they said, because we are talking about um, abundance, do use citrine. So I have these little citrines. Yes. And I'm actually going to make a little citrine tower here and uh, and they said put one here and one here so i'm just following the guidance in my head and this is a guidance that i have it's available to anyone who will just go calm inside themselves and listen in a certain kind of way and how it shows up it's not a voice instructing you it's an idea that comes forward in that moment of quietness because it's mental telepathy essentially and they said, yes, another little citrine that we can put at this corner. So then we can move here and here. And do we have another citrine? Not here in this box, but of course I have my citrines over there. And so I'm going to use this double terminated one right here, like so. And so we've got citrine energy there. And now I'm going to take some rubies. And I did get a whole bunch of little rubies and of course this is corundum so i'm going to scatter them on here so vivian there the rubies are just raw stone yes raw gemstone these are, yes these are just little corundum crystals that's ruby is they red if they blue they sapphire and there we go. And so, you know, rubies sound expensive, but these, these little items they are do. not. And if you have a genuine ruby, you can use that. If you like have a ring that has a ruby in it, then go by all means use that. Gems have, of course, a very high vibrational frequency and they're stronger than a little rough stone like this. So that's why I'm using all of this. But you know, I just have a lot of stones, so I use a lot of stones. You've got to remember yes. that intention is the key. And anything that uh -huh. helps you with your intention is going to work. Um, and you don't even have to have this for uh, manifestation work to work. You need your own brain. And um, yes. I proved this to myself long ago when I was a new practitioner back in South Africa. I read a little article called Silver Mind Control. It wasn't even an article. It was an introduction to a class. And it said, you can just yes. manifest whatever you want. And I thought, that's neat. I'm going to. And I thought, well, what do I want? And I thought, well, I want a cyclamen plant. <laughs> that's what I wanted. And the next day, there was a knock at my front door. And there was a complete stranger holding a cyclamen plant. And I went, good grief, wow. this actually worked. <laughs> and she was a neighbor who lived at the bottom of the road 
who knew my mother and we've been in the house six months already and she decided yes. she said you know what I just thought I'm going to get the cyclamen and have it as a housewarming gift for you so there we are so now I'm putting a little bit of silver topaz these are little tumbled yes. silver topaz stones and I'm going to just sprinkle them around here on my little manifestation thing now the important thing to remember is that this layout of crystals is programming me. Yes. That means it's going to make yes. me work harder to do whatever is on that piece of paper. So if you don't yes. want to work harder and you don't want to travel the path and you, you it, this is not about someone else doing it for you, it's about programming you to manifest what you want. And this is going to be the assisting energy and so always remember that and i learned that because i programmed a crystal a manifestation crystal to help me manifest my book everyday magic and yes. then i went for a run and a bee kept buzzing around me and i thought what's this bee trying to tell me and the bee was trying to tell me that once you get the train on the tracks and you're going yes. at a certain speed you better pay attention because otherwise you're going to have a train wreck. And that is the thing, the responsible point with regard yes. to manifestation work. It is very, you need to be very responsible about what you manifest and always be careful what you ask for. We know the saying, don't learn it the hard way, pay respect and be sure that you are being specific about what you want and then you've got to do the work that goes with it. If you don't, you'll get a train wreck and that you don't want. Uh -huh. You do not want a train wreck. Yeah. So then to finish this, I'm going to use my Lem Lem Lemurian side over here of the swan. And I'm just going to grid it again because that's what the guides are telling me to do. And there we are, nearly, nearly done. And then this way, and this way, and this way. And now that is a layout that is programming yes. me for, to manifest what mm -hmm. I have on that little piece of paper. I hope I don't mm -hmm. regret it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it's going to be exciting. We'll see what happens next. So there we are. That's That's how to do manifestation work with crystals is it the only way absolutely not it's the way that i've found i can do it that works right. successfully for me and this can be adapted however you want with great responsibility all right vivian do you leave vivian do you leave that layout as it is and pop it somewhere special or what yes. happens with that layout Yes, exactly that. Thanks for, for asking such a good question, Tony, and helping me to remember what I left out because that's exactly what you do. You pop it somewhere special and you yes. leave it there as long as you want it to activate it and you don't want to let it get uh, sort of dusty and neglected. You can energize yes. it on a weekly basis. Say this is meant to last for six months then clean it, re-energize it, check how it's going. Or maybe even better, just leave it for seven days and then release the energy into the ether and allow mm -hmm. the energies to come back to you and allow yourself to be affected by what's coming in. But yes, that's right. You can put it on an altar. You can put it like I have a, you know, a, a nice work desk. Yes, I can desk. find a spot yes. to put it and it's going to be good. And I can, you can even put it on another bed of crystals if you want to. If you want to really, ah, you know, power it up. Okay. There are different ways to cope with that. And now I think I'll come back to the other screen to talk about connecting with spirit guides, unless you have another yes, question. Fantastic. No, no, okay, that's, that's wonderful. Is Vivian, is there significance in using um, a, a covering in your special box? So I see that you've got velvet that lines that box. Is that just personal preference? That is, it's just a personal preference because the box is the right size yes. for me. Let me just come in and sit here yes. and, and talk. So the box is the right size. It's just an ordinary little cardboard box, you see. 
So we don't want yes. to look at the yes. cardboard box. I covered it in black velvet. But if you have a very nice yes. box or tray or something, it is your treasure box. So you do want to, yes. you know, you That's do want I'm to make it nice. And I've found that the, the black velvet is a nice little way to make this cardboard box a little cozier. Okay. So Beautiful. Thank you so much, Vivian. So now we want to talk about crystals and um, spirit guides. Yes. And this is absolutely new to me. I've not heard um, about using crystals to attract spirit guides. I've only ever done the practice of meditation and asking for that intuitive guidance. So this, I'm really looking forward to this segment. So um, audience what Vivian's going to do for us next is show how crystals can attract spirit guides. And so you can use this in um, your meditation um, and your dream work where you want to receive a message or guidance around a specific question or something that's going on in your life. And so Vivian's going to explain to us how this works. And it's, I believe that it's similar to setting intentions and thoughts um, and a, a conscious awareness so i'm going to hand over to you again vivian okay so tony you're absolutely right the one way to connect to spirit guides is just through a meditation and a guide you know you want to do a guided meditation but you can guide yourself you don't have to have someone else guiding you and actually this yes. is a guided meditation but using a crystal to as an aid and an assist and one of the reasons for that is to get out of our own the limitations of our brain and to if we project through the crystal it's some it, it's an aid but also crystals are very much associated with, with spirit guides in different ways that and, I, and I'll talk a little bit about them. now my main spirit guide crystal I told the story about it uh, I tell the story about it in Everyday Magic, and I have put that story on yes. the YouTube channel. And our YouTube channel is called Crystal Surgery and Crystal Healing Techniques. So it's very easy to find. You just look up Crystal Surgery on YouTube. You're going to get straight to our channel. And um, and yeah. you can get see, meet and greet that particular um, stone that started me uh, on using phantom quartz crystals to connect with my spirit guides. And I had a very powerful experience in that instance. And the story is there already. So I want to talk differently today, as well yes. as the fact that the crystal went and hid from me. So I can't even show it to you, but you will see me holding it in my fingers, kind of like this in, in, the, in the relevant YouTube. I'm holding the crystal yes. like this, it's the thumbnail. So that's an aid for that. And I just want to show and explain about phantom crystals because that's what you use to contact the yeah, spirit guides. Right. So this is a Brandberg amethyst phantom. And what makes it a phantom is that the amethyst is like a ghost inside the quartz crystal. And you can clearly see that some of it is amethyst and some of it is clear quartz. That is yes. a classic phantom crystal. And then mm -hmm. this particular one is a white phantom crystal so the crystal itself is sort of a smoky gray color but the yes. phantom the white there and this is a very very important crystal to me because this crystal connected me to a particular spirit guide whose name is big chief and big chief yes. is an extremely bossy spirit guide that i have many an argument with but actually i don't dare argue with him because who you know, don't argue with Big Chief because he's Big Chief. But he guides me whenever it is group dynamics and family dynamics. He gives me yes. amazing, amazing information that I would never be able to access on my own because we are diametrically opposed. I don't agree with him and he doesn't agree with me. And he gives me this other perspective and these other insights. And guess what? they are of more value than what I'd be coming up with on the earthly plane from my vantage point, because he's up there with a completely different view of what's going on. Yes. And that's why I like to consult with spirit guides in all my work, because I want to harness what I don't know, what I know I already know, but what about what yes. I don't know and what I can't know 
I need access yes. to that. And I get that access through my spirit guides. And that's where crystal surgery comes from. There is no way I could have come up with crystal surgery. There's just no way. I'm not that smart. I'm not bad, but I'm not that smart. So there we are. Thank you, Big Chief, for all the support that you give me. And everyone who works with me, everyone who works with me gets to meet Big Chief indirectly in this way. Wonderful. But what yes. are we going to use today? Oh, I have another uh, crystal that says, please show me too. So this is a, a different kind of white fountain. This is ambligonite material, which is, um, yes. uh, uh, you know, so there's the white phantom in there. So you can see the ghost of a crystal. Yeah, I'm going like in the mirror here. And yes. then the clear quartz over there. And so this one also said, show me, show me. The crystals love to brag and they love to show <laughs> off and they love to uh, hear you talk about them just like your puppy and your kitty and your baby yes. they are just like that. They're real fun and they rely on us to give them arms and legs so that they can also walk around and be active and engage. So there we yes. are. That's a white phantom also and bligonite. Um, so, but what we're going to use today for our meditation is this citrine smoky quartz that has such a beautiful, beautiful uh, oh, clarity wow. of this peak of smoky quartz over here. Really, really amazing. And then the rest of it, it is citrine, and it's a it's an, a nice one. And I use it on my desk at work, and it assists me in many, many healing sessions. And so I haven't met the guide that's associated with it. And so I will talk through how to get into side the crystal. And it's a meditation, of course, and then get inside and meet your guides. So what I do is I look inside the crystal for its entry point. Uh, as I ask it, show me, my, show me your entry point. And this one is doing something different. So this is a live exploration for me. It says, put me to your third eye first. And I say, well, which facet? And it says this one over here. I must put this facet to my third eye. And that's how I must begin. So I will do that. And so remember, I'm asking this crystal. So whatever crystal you use, ask the crystal. Ask the crystal, ask the crystal, and see what idea comes into your mind. There we go. And it says the entry point. So interesting. I would never, ever, ever have thought this on my own. I must enter through the termination. That's the first time that's ever happened. So always ask Gosh. because it's always something new. And that's how we get there is by not using what we've used before, but allowing that new thing to come in. So I'm going to go in through the termination. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and then I'll describe my journey and where I get to, and then I'm going to look for a bench or somewhere I can sit. And then I'm going to sit there and invite the new guide in to meet me. And then we'll see what happens. Maybe nothing. Who knows? <laughs> so here I go. And so to do this, I'm going to go into a light trance because I know I'm aware of the computer and we're talking and Zoom and da 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 and an audience. And so, I'm, but I do have to go into a trance to do this. I can't be in a normal state of consciousness. So if I start talking in tongues, then not my fault. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So here goes, and I'm, I'm being asked to, I'm being told project through your third eye. Tell them to project through their third eye. So you let your sense of your consciousness rise to your third eye. So I'm rising to my third eye. And from my third eye, I see a strand, a pathway of light into the termination of the crystal. And the crystal is actually opening like a flower and inviting me in. And I go in and now I'm floating, floating, floating. And now I'm beginning to land feet first. And I'm on that smoky part, this part here is where I've landed. And I'm actually in a cave. I'm at the mouth of a cave. And inside the cave, there's a fire. I can see logs and flames. Oh, I'm getting such goose flesh, I must admit. Whew. 
And my guide is actually waiting there for me, which is a little bit different because usually one finds a bench or somewhere to sit and then, the, and then ask the guide to come. But this time the guide is waiting for me and I go in and I see the guide and uh, Tony, I don't know if it's mine or yours. This is an Aboriginal guide. This is an oh. Aboriginal man in ceremonial garb. And the inside of the cave is all opal. So I've joined you in Australia, Tony. Yeah, I think so. And I'm being shown all the colors of the opal. And the guide said, this is our magic place. And he said, he will work with me. And he's showing me a boomerang. And the boomerang <laughs> is a symbol <laughs> of whatever we send out is going to come back to us. And that is, means we must be responsible about what we send out because it's going to come back to us. And so never do something to someone else that you wouldn't want done to you. And that is his main message. And he said, let the, let the people of the earth realize this and understand this, that every action has a reaction. And we must think mm. about of the boomerang. Then he also wants to show yeah. me the shape of the boomerang. And he said, this is a, some, going to be a symbolic shape for me in the future. And I will know that this meeting with him is real because a boomerang will appear to me in the next week. And, you know, that's him spontaneously giving me this uh, confirmation message because you do want to ask for a sign that uh, it can't too difficult to get but it mustn't be yeah. so easy that it's around everywhere there must be a real sign a concrete sign so a boomerang i haven't seen a boomerang image in a long time and so if i do yes. see a boomerang within the next week then that confirms that i did not make up this meditation and this content uh, and he tells me i will be in australia by next year and he will be waiting yeah i'm coming to see you. <laughs> good. Yeah, that's good, nice. Good, message. good, good. All right. Now let me ask him if he has something to tell everybody who's listening in tonight. And he says, I've already said my words. You see, they're always so stern with me. I've already said, <laughs> don't do anything to anybody else that you wouldn't want done to you. But he says, likewise, let's finish that. If you put out good in the world, if you put out love in the world, if you put out help and healing in the world, this is what will also come back to you. Remember to open your heart to receiving. Don't only give, also receive. receive. Wow. That's a very good message for me personally, I have to admit. Yes. Wow, that's amazing. I'm quite moved. So now it's very important for me to thank him. And he's nodding to me. And he said, I should come back now. And he will see me when I come to Australia. That's when I will meet him again. <laughs> so, wow, that feels like the setup. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to come back out and I must use the same pathway as I used to get into the crystal. And he's going very quickly. He's doing like a magic chant to speed me up. He says, you need to give Neil time because what Neil has to say is also yes. important. So I yep. am going to come back up out of the crystal. I'm out of the crystal. The point is closed. And I am back here in regular world and reality. I'm out of my trance and I'm back with my feet on the ground. And I have said my say. <laughs> and so has our Aboriginal guide. Wow, that was unexpected. Vivian, that, for me, I could actually, everything that you said, I could actually see and feel like all the warmth of the flames, the shape of the boomerang, the color of the room. So uh, I've not experienced that level of connectivity, cohesiveness before. That was really quite amazing. And uh, I felt that that message was equally for me as well as you. And I too, goosebumps as well. So yeah. 
pretty good yeah. stuff, right? Yeah, yeah, no, it, it was a good yeah, one. I, well, I mean, it just, it was off the cuff for what? sure. Took me by surprise, yeah. and uh, but, I, yes. but I feel I feel good. I feel I, I feel supported. I feel connection. Yes. And this is the thing yes. with the crystals; they do amplify the experience, and you do get yes. something different when you work with the crystals from if you just do it on your own. Uh, yeah. And that's why I work with crystals because because we all need all the help we can get. I, I do want to hand over to Neil because I know that what he yes. has to say is very I, very important and helpful also for connecting with spirits. Okay, Absolutely. thank you. Thank, thank you, you so Here's much, Neil. Vivian. Thank you. Okay, so Neil is gonna come on and talk to us about meeting with our spirit animal. And um, the notes that I made in reference to this section was that your spirit animal is a reflection of you and it's there to remind you of your own inherent wisdom. Um, I understand that they represent archetypal energies, typical traits that are personified by that particular creature or animal, and they act as our allies, teachers, guides, protectors. Um, so I'm going to hand over to Neil. This is the gorgeous Neil, and he's going to walk us through um, connecting with our uh, spirit animal. Over to you, Neil. Hi, Tony, and thank you very much. Hello. So, yes, I'm going to give what will have to be a fairly quick description and explanation yes. of how to do a shamanic journey and then on the shamanic journey, how to connect with, how to have an initial encounter with one's power animal, as, as they're called. Yes. yes. So... The shamanic journey is the method whereby one goes into an altered state of consciousness. So you're not in your everyday ordinary state of mind, but you're in a somewhat altered state, which is conducive to connecting with experiences that you ordinarily may not have or not that easily. So uh -huh. by going into the shamanic mm -hmm. trance, you're more easily able to make that connection. And the manner in which one is helped to make that shift in consciousness is by listening to a very rhythmic drum beat. So this is my shamanic drum and the sound might not come out um, on our interview, but as Vivian said, if your listeners go to our website, chapra.com and backslash journey, so it's chapra.com backslash journey. There yes. they will find the sound file of the drumming that they can download and put onto their phones or their audio devices. But uh, Neil, so th is the drumming is the drumming to do with the sound vibration? That's it's the to connection? do with the, the vibration, it's to do with the frequency, the the actual yes. number of beats per minute. Okay. Is is important. So it's it's quite a rapid okay. beat. And usually a drum is used, but it could be a rattle. So what and the whole point of doing this, the soul retrieval, at least the um, there's so many different things in shamanism. The power yes. animal yes. meeting the power animal is to meet with and establish a relationship over time with this benevolent spirit whose desire is to help us in our lives. And the help could, okay. could come in the form of healing, emotional healing or physical healing. It could Definitely. come in the form of answers, guidance and protection, but especially what the power animal does and it's kind of built in to the name is it restores and boosts our own power. And power is really important. Power is what enables us to get things done. Power is something that protects us from illness. And so yes. having a strong personal power, obviously not to dominate other people, but to be powerful is really important. And connecting with one's power animal does that. 
Yes. Yes. So once you've got the, once you've downloaded the sound file and put it on your yes. phone, um, the the procedure is, and I'll I'll speak in bits and pieces because there's a lot to That's it, although fine. it's quite simple. Is um, you would before you start, you would want to think of a place from which you can imagine yourself going downwards. So for example, okay. you could imagine that you're walking in the woods or out in nature somewhere and you're on a path and the path starts going downwards, very Down. distinctly downwards. And you follow that so like path. From, from a mountain walking down to a stream. Exactly. Or maybe okay. you're walking and you find a big hole in the ground, if that's okay. a comfortable image for you. And then you would mm -hmm. climb down that hole and proceed down and down and down. No or maybe you're walking in the mountains and there's a cave. And at the back of the cave, you find an entrance and you go in and then that oh. leads. And in shamanic terminology, where you're heading for is what's called the lower world. And that's just the, the designation, the name given to this benevolent spirit realm where you will encounter the spirits. And this is the amazing and fascinating thing is that in the lower world, the spirits will show themselves in animal form. So, the, so the power animal is a benevolent loving spirit who takes on the appearance of an animal and exactly what that animal will be. You'll only know when you do the journey and meet the spirit animal. So there's no need to try and imagine in advance what it might be because you'll only yes. know when you're there. So you've got your soundtrack on your phone, you put on your mm -hmm. headphones, you lie down comfortably, preferably in a dark place so that you're not bothered by the, by the light. You close your eyes and you put on the drumming soundtrack. So through your yeah. headphones, you'll be hearing this ongoing beat, this very simple. And that'll continue for the duration of the journey which is about 15 minutes. So the drumming okay. starts and immediately you put yourself at that starting point that you've chosen, whether it's the path that goes downwards or the hole or the cave, doesn't matter. You've chosen what seems like a good way of going down. And you don't want to rush. You want to give yourself plenty of time and you, in your mind's eye, in your imagination, in your intention, you take yourself down, 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 being quite happy to give, give quite a bit of time to going down. There's something about the longer you give in the going down part of the journey, the deeper that shift in consciousness, which is what one is looking for. So you go down, but your intention is that at some point you'll emerge into a completely new landscape. So it won't be where you started. And again, you don't know what it's going to look like until you arrive. So this is the nice thing. You don't need to set up anything in advance of what you're going to find and what it's going to look like. You're leaving it open. All you're doing is following the drum rhythm and following the intention to go down. So you arrive in what we call the lower world where the benevolent spirits will be found and you go out into this landscape. And initially it's really interesting just to see what you can see, to explore the territory. Yeah. But all the while in the back of your mind, you have the intention that you wish to see and meet an animal. But of course, when I say animal, I mean a loving, benevolent spirit, yeah. animal form. Yeah. And yeah. we're particularly talking about a power animal which is an exceptionally powerful and exceptionally benevolent spirit. Okay. So when you so this is safe. 
This is safe. This is the the whole. That's a, I'm glad you brought that up, Tony. The whole yes. experience is built on the premise that you're doing something sacred and benevolent yes. in a realm of love and kindness. Absolutely. Yeah. So yeah. you might be a little bit apprehensive about doing something that you've never done before, but there's nothing to be yeah. anxious about. Then when you see the animal, the spirit in animal form, you want to in some way go to it and introduce yourself and meet it. So just mm -hmm. like if you were meeting somebody new at a party, there'd be this initial encounter, you'd introduce yourself. And then if there's time, because it all is based on how long the journey uh, still has to go, you can let the spirit know what kind of healing or help you would like in your life. So you just communicate okay. that there's something that you would really appreciate help with. And probably by that point, the journey is almost over. And you'll know uh -huh. that it's over because then the drumbeat will change in a very, uh -huh. very obvious way. And you'll hear what's okay. called the callback. And the callback is where there'll be a series of four slow beats and the listeners will hear this on the track that they download. And then there'll be about a minute of a very, very rapid beat. And that'll be the signal to say, thank you. Goodbye. You we're done for today. And you simply come on back the way you came down. And in oh, essence, yeah. that's it. And the idea would be that you do this repeatedly and build up a relationship with that spirit. With your animal. With your Neil, spirit, with I, our I, animal. Yeah, Neil, um, are we allowed to ask, what has your experience been with your power animal and has there been more than one power animal for you? We've got about three minutes to go, so. Yes, well, I have had, I won't go into the detail because of, time but i can yes. just say that i've been helped in the most amazing way both with practical difficulties that i've encountered in my life and needed yes. help with but also as a shamanic practitioner where i've asked for guidance for other people and being able to yes. bring very valuable information and healing to others which i've got from the spirits it's not something that i've done i've i've no, been no. the in between person. Yeah. Um, and, and then as you as you journey repeatedly, you're very likely to meet more than one spirit. And eventually okay. you have, you'll assemble a little team of loving spirits whose sole drive is to help you to help one in one's life. It's a wonderful thing. Neil, what sort of power animals have you encountered? Well, you know, they can take many forms, as many as are in the animal yes. kingdom. Plus, oh, they, wow. might even, they might even take the form of a more uh, fantastical Mystical? Um, shape. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. you know, you could, you could see a bear, you could see a lion, yes. you could see a mouse. Yes. There's no sense that a smaller animal is less powerful than a bigger animal. And wow. um, you could see a unicorn. Oh, wow. Wow. So, okay. So it's, a, it's fascinating, the forms that you might encounter. And you never know what you're going to get? Well, you never know. The, the very first time you don't know, when you journey repeatedly, yes. you will probably visit the you same can... one again and again. Yes. Fantastic. And, and you Neil, usually, one last thing, once you've got the manner of going down, be it your tunnel or your steps or your path, you would use that same pathway again and again for again. your journeys. Yeah. Okay. Neil, thank you so much. We're almost out of time, but I just want to remind listeners that if you go to chaparra.com, that's S-H-A-S-C-H, 
apeia.com, you will find this recording that Neil's done specially for the show today. You'll be able to download it and you'll be able to try this yourself. Um, okay. Neil, we're just about out of time. I'll yes, say good quick goodbye to the gorgeous. Thank you so much for that. Pleasure. Thank you, Tony. Thank you. How, how soothing is that uh, drum beat? It's really soothing, isn't it? Well, well, the the thing with a shaman's drumming is it has a very special quality. I doubt it will come out yes. fully as magical as it is on the on the recording. Um, but yeah. it, it's a it's a powerful tool, and um, yes. different shamans have different power in their drumming. And Neil's a particularly powerful shaman and has a very very strong connection with his with his power animals and his uh, spirit guides. And ha he does extraordinary work. He's not going to tell you that. Uh, it's my job <laughs> to tell you this is the real thing. Really, it is. I can. Yeah. I could actually feel the energy when he started beating the drum and I've, I've done some drum work before, so I'm quite familiar with that energy, but yes, absolutely could feel that. So listeners, don't forget to jump on and uh, grab that um, recording that Neil's done specifically for us for the show today. Vivian, we are actually out of time. What an amazing show. I'm so proud that we got through all of those components and questions that the audience put to us last week. We will be back next week and we have another show planned for you. Vivian and Neil Shapiro, thank you so much. This thank is you. Tony Lontis. And this is our show, Healing Energy for Everyone. The links to the shows are in your chat box if you're li listening live. Otherwise, jump onto RadioTony.com and you'll find my co-host, Vivian and Neil. Uh, jump onto Shapira.com and you'll find all the information from the show and your links to the crystals and crystal healing. Vivian and Neil, thank you so much. It's thank a divine Thanks, pleasure Tony. working with you. Thank you, audience, for listening today. And we will be back next week, same time. Bye.